In the Middle Ages, the English drama was religious and didactic. Its chief forms being the miracle plays, which presented in crude dialogue stories from the Bible and the lives of the saints, and the moralities, which taught lessons for the guidance of the life through the means of allegorical action and the personification of abstract qualities. Both forms were severely limited in their opportunities for picturing human nature and human life with breadth and variety. With the revival of learning came naturally the study and imitation of the ancient classical drama and in some countries this proved the chief influence in determining the prevalent type of drama for generations to come. But in England, though we can trace important results of the models given by Seneca in tragedy and Plotus in comedy, the main characteristics of the drama of the Elizabethan age were of native origin and reflected the spirit and the interests of the Englishmen of the day. This lesson today is on William Shakespeare, the eminent playwright of the Elizabethan drama. The structure of the lesson goes like this, the objectives, introduction, English drama, the yarner and its development, Renaissance, drama and theatre, Elizabethan and Jacobian drama, the major playwrights of the age, William Shakespeare, the stalwart, the major plays of Shakespeare, his outstanding tragedies, King Lear, the noteworthy Shakespearean tragedy, and summing up. The objectives of the lesson are to introduce the students to the Elizabethan drama, give a brief survey of the rise of drama as a dominating yarner in the 16th and 17th century English literary history, to introduce the students to the outstanding playwrights of the period, to give an account of the significant plays of the period, to introduce the students to William Shakespeare, the eminent playwright of the period, to give an account of the major plays, throw light on the tragedies written by him, critically analyze his representative tragedy, King Lear. The drama of this age, however, appeared in basically three forms, the chronicle histories, the tragedies, and the comedies. The playwrights of the age developed this yarner through their artistic skills and one after the other contributed in a great way to the development of this yarner which was directly linked with the life of the times. The chronical history was represented in the Harvard classics by Edward II of Marlowe, the greatest of the predecessors of Shakespeare. Shakespeare himself produced some ten plays belonging to the type. These dramas reflect the interest the Elizabethans took in the heroic past of their country. However, as a form of dramatic art, the chronical history had many defects and limitations. Often the playwrights found opportunity for studies of character, as that of the king in Marlowe's tragedy, for real dramatic structures, as in Shakespeare's Richard III, or the display of gorgeous rhetoric and national exaltation, as in Henry V. Elizabethan tragedy. Closely connected with the historical plays was the early development of tragedy. Shakespeare became the greatest master of tragedy and his great tragedies came as Hamlet, King Lear, Macbeth. Hamlet became a great success for splendor of poetry, absorbing nature of the plot, vividness of of the drawing of the characters. Hamlet, King Lear and Macbeth are among 
Shakespeare's finest productions and they represent the noblest pitch of English genius of these Hamlet's was Hamlet was perhaps most popular at the time of its production and it has held its interest and provoked discussion as perhaps no other play of any time or country has done King Lear owes its appeal less to its tendency to rouse curiosity than to its power to awe us with an overwhelming spectacle of the suffering which folly and evil can cause and which human nature can sustain in spite of or perhaps because of its intricacy of motive and superabundance of incident it is the most overwhelming of all in its effect on our emotions compared with it macbeth is a simple play but nowhere does one find a more masterly portrayal of the moral disaster that falls upon the man who seeing the light chooses the darkness however shakespeare was by no means alone in the production of great tragedy contemporary to him or immediately following came johnson marston middleton messenger ford shirley and others The man who most nearly approached him in tragic intensity was John Webster. The Duchess of Malfi is a favorable example of his ability to inspire terror and pity. And though his range is not comparable to that of Shakespeare, he is unsurpassed in his power of coining a phrase which casts a lucid light on the recesses of the human heart moments of supreme passion elizabethan comedy in the field of comedy shakespeare's supremacy is hardly less assured from the nature of this kind of drama we do not expect in it the depth of penetration into human motive or the call upon our profounder sympathies that we find in tragedy the comedies of shakespeare are far from superficial as you like it twelfth night are the comedies that not only display with great skill many sides of human nature but with indescribable lightness and grace introduce us to charming creations speaking lines rich in poetry and sparkling with wit The next to come on the scene is Ben Jonson. His alchemist belongs to a type which Shakespeare hardly touched, the realistic comedy. It is a vivid satire on the forms of trickery prevailing in London about 1600, alchemy, astrology and the like. The plot is constructed with the care and skill for which its author is famous decker's the shoemaker's holiday in a much gayer mood shows us another side of london life that of the respectable trades folk something of what johnson and decker do for the city messenger does for country life in his best played a new way to pay old debts the philister of bumer and fletcher belongs to the same type of romantic co- drama as the tempest the type of play which belongs to comedy by virtue of its happy ending but contains incidents and passages in an all but tragic tone the dramas of the elizabethan period printed in the harvard classics serve to give a taste of the quality of this literature at its highest but cannot of course show the surprising amount of it or indicate the extreme literary historical interest of its rise and development english drama the yanar and its development drama was introduced to england from europe by the romans and auditoriums were constructed across the country for this purpose by the medieval period the mummers plays had developed a form of easy street theater associated 
with the Morris dance concentrating on themes such as St. George and the Dragon and Robin Hood. These were folk tales retelling old stories and the actors traveled from town to town performing these for their audience in return for money and hospitality. The medieval mystery plays and morality plays which dealt with Christian themes were performed at religious festivals. The period known as the English Renaissance approximately 1500 to 1660 saw a flowering of the drama and all the arts. During the reign of Elizabeth I in the late 16th and early 17th century, a London-centered culture that was both courtly and popular produced great poetry and drama. William Shakespeare was himself an actor and deeply involved in the running of the theatre company that performed his plays regularly. Christopher Marlowe, Ben Johnson and John Webster were often engaged to write courtly masks. Ornate plays where the actors were wearing masks. The English Renaissance paved the way for the sudden dominance of drama in English society. English Renaissance Theatre is English drama written between the Reformation and the closure of the theatres in 1642. It may also be called Early Modern English Theatre or Elizabethan Theatre. It includes the drama of William Shakespeare along with many other famous dramatists. English Renaissance Theatre is often called Elizabethan Theatre. However, in a strictly accurate sense, the term Elizabethan Theatre covers only the plays written and performed publicly in England during the reign of Queen Elizabeth I from 1558 to 1603. Elizabethan Theatre is distinguished from Jacobian Theatre and Carolyn Theatre each associated with the kings. King James I with Jacobian Theatre from 1603 to 1625 and Carolyn Theatre associated with King Charles I 1625 until the closure of theatres in 1642. In practice however, Elizabethan Theatre is often used as a general term for all English drama from the Reformation to the closure of theatres in 1642, thus including both Jacobian and Carolian drama. As such, it can be synonymous with English Renaissance drama or early modern English drama. English Renaissance theatre derived from several medieval theatre traditions. The sources of this theatre were the mystery plays, the morality plays and the university drama that attempted to recreate Greek tragedy. At court, the performance of masks by courtiers and other amateurs common in the early years of Elizabeth was replaced by the professional companies with noble patrons who grew in number and quality during her reign. Elizabethan and Jacobian drama. The phrase is commonly used for the entire body of Renaissance English drama produced in the century preceding the closing of the theatres in 1642. Although it is sometimes employed in a narrower sense to designate the drama of the later years of Elizabeth's reign and the few years following it thus. Shakespeare is an Elizabethan dramatist although more than one-third of his active career life is the reign of James I. Modern English drama not only came into being in Elizabethan times, but developed so rapidly and brilliantly 
that the Elizabethan era is the golden age of the English drama. The Jacobian drama is that portion of Renaissance period which fell during the reign of James I, that is from 1603 to 1625, so called from the Latin form of James Jacobus. Early Jacobian writing showed the attitude characteristics of the Carolin age. During the Jacobian age, the breadth between Puritan and Cavaliers steadily widened and there was a widespread growth of realism in art and cynicism in thought. It is the greatest period of the English drama. Shakespeare wrote his greatest tragedies and tragic comedies during this period. The major playwrights of the age were Sir William Berkeley, Richard Brom, George Chapman, Robert Davenport, Thomas Decker, John Fletcher, Robert Greene, Thomas Hughes, Ben Johnson, Thomas Kidd, Thomas Lodge, John Lilly, Christopher Marlowe, Philip Massinger, Thomas May, Thomas Middleton, Thomas Nash, Thomas Norton, George Peel, Thomas Sackville, William Sampson, William Shakespeare, Philip Sidney, Sir John Suckling and above all John Webster. We now come to concentrate on William Shakespeare, the stalwart figure of the age or of all the ages. Born on 23rd April 1564 in Stratford-upon-Avon, Warwickshire, England, he rose to be the greatest dramatist ever born. He died incidentally on the same date that is April 23rd in 1616 again at Stratford-upon-Avon, Warwickshire, England. His occupation naturally was a playwright, poet and actor. William Shakespeare was an English poet and playwright widely regarded as the greatest writer of the English language and one of the world's prominent dramatists. He wrote approximately 38 plays and 154 sonnets. Already a popular writer in his own lifetime, Shakespeare became increasingly celebrated after his death and his work adulated by numerous prominent cultural figures through the centuries. He is considered to be England's national poet and sometimes referred to as the Bard of Avon. Scholars believe Shakespeare to have produced most of his work between 1586 and 1612, although the exact dates and chronology of the plays attributed to him are under considerable debate. He is counted amongst the very few playwrights who have excelled in both tragedy and comedy, and his plays combine popular appeal with complex characterization, poetic grandeur, and philosophical depth. About his early life, we know that he was born at Stratford-upon-Avon. He was a son of a successful Glover and Alderman, John Shakespeare, from Snetterfield, and of Mary Arden, a daughter of the gentry. He probably attended King Edward VI Grammar School in Central Stratford and at the age of 18 married Anne Hathaway. His theatrical career and London. Shakespeare was a playwright in London by 1592. By late 1594, Shakespeare was an actor, writer and a part owner of a playing company known as the Lord Chamberlain's men. 
Like others of the period, the company took its name from its aristocratic sponsor, in this case, the Lord Chamberlain. By 1598, he appeared at the top of a list of actors in Every Man in His Humor, written by Ben Jonson. There is a tradition that Shakespeare, in addition to writing many of the plays, his company enacted and being concerned as part owner of the company with business and financial details, continued to act in various parts such as the ghost of Hamlet's father, Adam in As You Like It and the chorus in Henry V. His later years show him as retired to Stratford in 1613. He died on April 23rd, 1616 at the age of 52. He died on his birthday, if the tradition that he was born on 23rd is correct. Shakespeare is buried in the chancel of Holy Trinity Church in Stratford-upon-Avon. He was granted the honor of burial in the chancel, not on account of his literary fame, but for purchasing a share of the tith of the church for 440 pounds, a considerable sum of money at the time. A monument on the wall nearest his grave, probably placed by his family, features a bust showing Shakespeare posed in the act of writing. Each year on his claimed birthday, a new quill pen is placed in the right hand of the bust. His major plays are Romeo Juliet, Macbeth, King Lear, Hamlet, Othello, Titus, Andronicus, Juliet Caesar, Antony, and Cleopatra, Coralinus, Troilus and Cressida, Timon of Athens, which are renowned tragedies. His comedies are A Midsummer Night's Dream, All's Well That Ends Well, As You Like It, Cymbeline, Love's Labour Lost, Measure for Measure, The Merchant of Venice, The Merry Wives of Windsor, Much Ado About Nothing, Pericles, Prince of Tyre, Taming of the Shrew, The Comedy of Errors, The Tempest, Twelfth Night, or What You Will, The Two Gentlemen of Verona, The Two Noble Kinsmen, The Winter's Tale, His Histories, King John, Richard II, Henry IV, Part I, Henry IV, Part II, Henry V, Henry VI, Part I, Henry VI, Part II, Henry VI, Part III, Richard III and Henry VIII. A number of Shakespeare's plays have the reputation of being among the greatest in the English language and in Western literature. He wrote tragedies, histories, comedies and romances, which have been transferred into every major living language in addition to being continually performed around the world. As was common in the period, Shakespeare based many of his plays on the work of other playwrights and reworked earlier stories and historical material. For example, King Lear is an adaptation of an earlier play also called King Lear. For plays on historical subjects, Shakespeare relied heavily on two principal texts. Most of the Roman and Greek plays are based on Plutarch's parallel lives from the 1579 English translation by Thomas Norton and the English history plays are indebted to 1587 edition of Rachel Hollinshed's The Chronicles of England, Scotland and Ireland which provided material for Macbeth and King Lear. Shakespeare also possibly borrowed stylistic elements from contemporary playwrights like Christopher Marlowe. One of Shakespeare's most original plays, at least in terms of writing, themes and setting, was The Tempest. Shakespeare, his plays, 
tend to be placed into three main stylistic groups. Early romantic comedies and histories such as Midsummer Night's Dream and Henry IV Part I. Middle period romantic comedies and tragedies including his most famous tragedies Othello, Macbeth, Hamlet and King Lear as well as problem plays such as Troilus and Cressida. His later romances such as The Winter's Tale and The Tempest. King Lear is generally regarded as one of William Shakespeare's greatest tragedies. It is based on the legend of King Lear, a king of pre-Roman Britain. After the restoration, the play was often modified by theatre practitioners who disliked its nihilistic flavour. But since World War II, it has come to be regarded as one of Shakespeare's supreme achievements. The tragedy is particularly noted for its probing observations on the nature of human suffering and kinship on a cosmic scale. The two distinct versions of the play, the true chronicle of the history of the life and death of King Lear,